Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Tactics Ogre Reborn. Last time we left off, we finished off Coda 3, defeated Blackmoor, and today we are going to be possibly finishing? I don't know how long Coda 4 is. Um, people have been warning me about the boss fight. Uh, someone even mentioned that I need the Ogre set to do it, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, and I do have the Ogre Blade now, so I was thinking we would do some cool stuff with the Ogre Blade, because there there is some pretty cool stuff you can do with uh, our friend here, the Ogre Blade. So, the whole thing with the Ogre Blade is it has Body Snatch right here. A secret and forbidden art that swaps the body of the caster with that of a single enemy target. So there's two cool things you can do with this. I can take a generic unit that I have, um, and I can body swap with a low level unit, and when you body swap, you keep your intelligence in mind specifically. Um, as far as I can understand, only generics can body swap, I believe. So, you can do some cool things with that. Um, you keep your int in mind, so you can swap into the body of a level 3, and then basically it's like reincarnating into Gaia, and you can level up all the way back up again, and it'll effectively double your intelligence and mind. Which is very, very cool. So, the other thing you can do is... Whatever class you are before you body swap, you keep those abilities, specifically. So, I can swap into something and give it abilities that it qu normally couldn't have. Like, I could swap, you know, and give, like, lich abilities to a lizard person. Or something like that. I think I have an idea of what I want to do. Um, I think Mathai here... ...is going to be body swapping, because there's a few cool things that Lich gets. Lich gets Nature's Touch... ...Reflection, and Meditate 4, specifically, and also, like, Engulf and stuff. And I think what I want to do is I want to body swap Mathai into a level 3 uh, generic winged. Then I can turn the generic winged into a rune fencer. They can use the summons, but they will have incredibly high intelligence, incredibly high mind, and they'll have access to all of the lich abilities. So to do that, we have to uh, world tarot back. Um, the other thing about the Ogre Blade is it is a two-handed weapon, so the only classes you can actually inherit skills from are Warrior, Terror Knight, Dragoon, Juggernaut, Lich, and Angel Knight. So I could also use Leopold here and get access to the Angel Knight abilities, which would be cool, but I think I'm more interested in the Lich ones specifically for this. As far as I understand, the blade doesn't go away or anything after you use it, so you can continue doing this just to get, like, stupid characters. Oh, wait. Liches cannot equip this item? Since the Ogre Blade is a two-handed sword, this can be used to collect skills from the following classes. Warrior, Terra Knight, Dragoon, S Juggernaut, Lich, and Angel Knight. Huh. Oh. If the person wielding the Ogre Blade transforms into a Lich or Angel Knight and are wielding the Ogre Blade, it can still perform a body swap and they retain those abilities. So actually, I'm gonna it's gonna have to be Warrior, Terra Knight, Dragoon, or Juggernaut that uh, I'm going to be getting these abilities for. Unfortunately, we can't do it with Mathai. I don't believe I have... Um, any more... rings... in here. Or, or the other thing, to turn someone into a divine. Let's see, this... Yeah, and use on the skeleton or ghost, they'll revive as a human. Um, I have the Book of the Dead. And use on a zombie, they'll revive as a skeleton or ghost. But I specifically don't have a Ring of the Dead, and I don't have the thing to turn someone into the other things, so... That's unfortunate, so I would have had to equip them with it beforehand, and then you would be able to get access to the Lich abilities and stuff. So that- that plan is a little bit out the window. That would have been a cool one to do. Um... But I don't think we're gonna be able to do that, so you know what I'm going to do instead. Regina... Regina... I think it may be you. I think I may turn with Regina into a winged. Because Regina has... We need to find out who has my highest int in mind out of all of my generic units. First and foremost. Alright, yeah, I think out of all of my generics, Regina... Um... Is the best. 
uh, as far as intelligence goes. This does mean I'm gonna have to change Regina to the Juggernaut class, because this is the only way I can actually have you, uh, do this thing successfully. So, if this works out how I think it's- how I think it's gonna work out, so you're gonna have access to Juggernaut abilities, which is gonna be pretty neat, on the class I turn you into. Um, and you're gonna have 200... You're, you're basically gonna double your int in mine. So it's not gonna be super wild, but we can do this multiple times as far as I understand. So if I switch Regina into a Juggernaut, your stats obviously go down a little bit. We give you the Ogre Blade. Let's just make sure what classes can use this. Say so yeah. Some basic ones. I could give people like Terror Knight abilities too and stuff like that, but eh. So there we go. Let's do that. And it makes sense if you're body swapping, you specifically keep your intelligence in mind specifically, because your mind is going with you into the new body. So the other st stats reset, but your mind and intelligence stay the same. That's a cool idea. I, uh, I really like that. So, all right, we have ourselves an Ogre Blade. We have our chosen generic that we would like to do this with. So let's go and see if we can find a level 3 winged, specifically. This is cool. Um, I, I did look up for a little bit of help on this because this game is so complicated and I want to do as much as I possibly can with my Ogre Blade. I worked very damn hard for this thing. <laughs> so, uh, if I can make a busted character with it and if it can be Regina, Uhuk's daughter, then we are sitting pretty. So I need to go find a level three winged. The lower the lower level, the better, and I think level threes are the lowest levels you can possibly run into, so. Um, I was gonna try and find a winged, but we don't run into winged super early. But that doesn't matter, because all that matters is the final body I get Regina into is a winged. Because I want Regina to be able to fly. Um, so for right now, I can just grab you and I can actually show what this whole level up process thing looks like. So we snatch your body, bam, Regina is now over here. So beautiful. Now a lair is a level 50 enemy and uh, we have to kill you. So if I look at your equipment, you you have the Damascus Helm, Falcon Mail, Lightning Gauntlets, Alluring Boots, and stuff like that. But the weapon is not over here. Oh, can we only use it once? Really? I thought you could use the Ogre Blade multiple times. Huh. I was under the impression you could, but possibly you can't. Huh. Well, if I don't get a winged, it's not the biggest deal in the world, I suppose. I do have a backup save here if I feel that I need it, but uh, for now, I just need to go ahead and end this battle. Maybe the Ogre Blade just went back into my inventory. I thought you could use it multiple times, but you might have to go get multiple Ogre Blades. Alright, there we go. Battle is over, so if we get back to the world map now... Well, Regina automatically just got to level 20. Um, so what I'm gonna want to do now... ...is swap Regina over to something else. So, where are you at, Regina? Should be right beside Uhuk. There you are. So, yeah, this is your current body. Um, let's just confirm we don't have the Ogre Blade. Okay, so yeah, that does completely consume the Ogre Blade. Alright, just wanted to confirm that. So that is unfortunate, but it happens. So, now what I can do is I can turn you into a Rune Fencer. <clears throat> if I turn you into a Rune Fencer, you'll be able to use Summons again. Uh, so Regina is now a Rune Fencer. You have 259 Int, even though you're only level 20. And now, if I level you up a ton, there we go. So now Regina is a rune fencer with 353 intelligence and 356 mind. So if I went and got more ogre blades, I could do this. But Regina is now straight up stronger than Sherry, um, even though she is a generic. So I could go get more uh, blades, like I said, and do this some more. But I don't particularly need to. It would be cool to have a better meditate on you. Um, but as you can see here, you do have access to Nature's Touch, Check, Intimidate, all of this jazz. So we have all of that now, which is neat. And uh, what I could do if I wanted to give you even more intelligence um, is switch you to a different 
class, but then you wouldn't be able to use um, your stuff that I like. Because unfortunately I can't change you back into a matriarch from here, and none of these classes can actually use summons except for Rune Fencer. So you would be stuck on Rune Fencer, but you would have access to your cool summons. The only problem with that, you only have Insight level 2. That's one of the benefits of um, having someone be a Lich before you swap them. But this class does get access to Conserve, which is cool. Hmm. These are things to think about. Okay, so I was sitting here thinking about what we could potentially do um, with Regina. Something that is interesting that I can't help but notice is Rune Fencers can actually... Well, not not, not Rune Fencers, but because I have that other class, I have access to, bow, to blow guns. I have a cursed weapon that is pretty cool um, that I could put on. Uh, also, this Crest of Fire, this is the thing I was talking about. Um, this lowers, this has just a ridiculous amount of stuff and it lowers your, um, your RT. So if I use this on a Cursed Weapon, it will get ridiculous stats as a payoff. So we could make a Cursed Weapon for Regina, uh, give, give her like a Cursed Blowpipe, and then she would have access to that. So she'd be a Rune Fencer rocking a Blowpipe. Um, that sounds interesting, and I could potentially turn it into a stat stick to make it even stronger. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the Matriarch class didn't have access to, uh, cudgels is the only problem. Because if I had cudgels, I could just give you some stabs on Rune Fencer, and you would be even stronger right now. But I don't have access to stabs. So, I don't have very access to very many things that would increase your intelligence for better magic casts. Um, I don't even have access to spell books or anything like that, so... That's unfortunate, but I could give you a Cursed Blowpipe, and the Cursed blow cup, uh, Blowpipe could potentially be extremely strong. So, uh, that's something to think about. Now the problem becomes, uh, figuring out what I want to do next. Um, I could also just turn Regina into a Cursed Weapon, I suppose, with her crazy intelligence. But, um, I don't know how effective that would be. Probably not too effective. So, I do need to get to the next anchor point, I believe. Which means I need to do Chrysaro and see a cutscene with, uh, Ronway, so. Alright, we are back in Coda, and I have Regina. It is unfortunate that I couldn't get a better class, specifically, um, for you. Like, a prerequisite class. I I, th I I think uh, the, the, the lizard person one that I got was the best one. The only other one that was kind of interesting that I could do was, um, what's it called? Terror Knight. Terror Knight would have been kind of cool, but uh, this we get access to check and stuff. I just wish I had a way to get a better meditate, but for that, I would have had to go in, get another Ring of the Dead, and uh, turn someone into a lich while they were holding the og ogre blade, and then we would be able to do it. You're specifically limited on what classes you can basically absorb the skills from because it has to be a class that can actually equip the Ogre Blade. If only there was like, equip two hand swords as a thing or something like that. But, alright, so we are good. We are in the current days with you, Regina. Like I mentioned, um, I can make a pretty busted, um, like, blowpipe. Um, with this Crest of Fire. That's maybe something to look into doing next. It could be interesting. Well, I'll make a, a backup save, and we'll see what we want to do here. The question is, who would I want to turn into a weapon now? Specifically, want someone that could become a ninja, um, because it has, like, one of the lowest RTs. Ninjas and Necromancers. Um, actually, I could make Raynard... Um, you're already level 41, but I don't want to change you off the Necromancer class. It's kind of a unique class for me to have. Uh, let's do Derwin. Derwin's been with us for a pretty hot minute. Alright, Derwin, you're gonna get turned into this. Um, I should specify I did change Derwin to water because, uh, you want the same element weapon as your character's class is. It's also going to be incredibly helpful because blowpipes have access to a ranged water skill which will be quite nice. So Denim's mostly just going to be running around using finishing blows on things now, which I was doing with him a lot of the time anyway. Like, even with Sanguine uh, and Double Attack, it... Usually my... my elemental... I mean, my finishing moves could still do about the same damage, so... Derwin, 
I also put the fire thing, the fire crest on you, so... We are good to go now. And I can put that on Denim and he'll have crazy stats and a blowpipe. Um, and I'm probably not the first person to put blowpipes and daggers on Denim, but I imagine it's not a common thing. Well, I guess if you make ninja denim, but... Alright. Blowpipe... Away. There we go, look at that. So, let's actually put it over the Assassin's Blade. Um, let's put the Assassin's Blade in, uh... The, um, second position here. So there we go! Those are the stats Denim's rocking now. He has a very, very good blowgun that is effective against humans, which will make it even stronger. It does slashing damage, which is weird for a blowgun. I guess you're spitting razors out of that thing. And yeah, very, very powerful blowgun. And now Denim's, like, ranged attacks are stronger than his other attacks. Honestly, do I even need this Assassin's Blade on now? Like, I'll lose a few stats for taking it off, but Denim's RT will go down a fair bit. So maybe it's better just to have Denim roll this. Solo. Like, what What else would I even put on? I mean, I could maybe put on another one of these just to increase your stats a little bit more, but that would increase your RT, so... Using it as a stat stick is kind of, eh. Alright, you know what, Denim? Just you with the blowpipe. The Derwin. Looks fine to me. Now I have to see about making a uh, two-handed sword. All right, here we are. Uhuk, the two-handed sword. Um, I changed Uhuk to lightning and I changed Gildas to lightning because Gildas is my two-handed um, sword user. And most of the special attacks with two-handed swords use lightning. So it makes the most sense. So Uhuk, you will continue serving the party just as a two-handed weapon that we will put on Gildas and I guess that means Gildas is definitely going to be one of my main characters in all of these battles so there we go it's a shame that Batarin is a kind of a poopy weapon but Gildas enjoy holding Uhuk in your hands does extra damage to reptiles because yeah Unfortunate. Would have been better to probably make it more effective against humans, but I just like the idea of the great sword, the two handed great sword named after the legend Uhuk. Look at it. Look at it in all of its glory. It's amazing. Alright. Well, with that, I guess we are good to go ahead and move forward here. Um, so let's do just that, why don't we? Let's check out uh, the rest of the main story. We've got all of our cursed weapons done. Regina's a powerhouse now. So I think we're good to continue. People have warned me that this fight is very, very hard. The motives behind many of Los Lorien's activities have long been a mystery. The attack on Goyat, a town on the island of Galdache, chief among them. According to a statement made to the Bakram by Dark Knight Commander Balsafan V. Roms, they planned the attack after learning of a group of rebels conducting raids on Haim was hiding there. However, this information was later revealed to be false, and Lotus paid reparation to Goliath for the damage done during the attack. Now their true intentions have been revealed. Los Lorien conducted the raid without Bakram help, and not one but several commanders were present. The Dark Knight Balsafan was among them, and some witnesses say they saw High Champion Tartarus as well. Even if armed militia were taking refuge there, it is questionable that so many Los Lorien elite would take part. Despite the many victims of the tragedy at Goliath, there was no record of rebels being captured. Though attempts were made to obtain such records after the war, documents lifting the names of suspect suspected rebels were never recovered. This can mean but one thing, the Dark Knights knew from the start that no rebels were harbored there. So why would they commit so brutal an act? Los Lorien attacked Goliath after learning the existence of a daughter born to King Dorgalua, most likely through Regent Branton Morn. It is also thought they had no intention of forming a long-term alliance with Branton and the Bakram. They acted under the pretense of eliminating rebel forces to conceal their true intentions. Yet after all their efforts, they were not able to locate the princess in the attack. Instead, they instilled a hatred of Lotus in the Wallister and created the hero of Goliath, Denim Pavel. Two years have passed since the raid on Goliath, with the war at an end, and Los Lorien now back in Lotus. Peace has returned to Valeria. Goliad has recovered swiftly, and few traces of the war remain. It should not be long before Goliad regains its status as Oberon's Pearl. 
In the coming days, the unveiling of a monument will take place in the central plaza in Goliath. The monument will be was constructed at the behest of Princess Versalia to honor the memory of those who died in the attack and remember how those precious lives brought the people of Valeria together. The Valerian Isles are now host to many visitors. We can but hope that those who see this symbol of Goliath will take home with them a desire for peace. There we go. So, that is our final thing there. Um, this is, uh, yep, he was able to blah blah blah. Just make sure we're having, we're not having uh, any updates here. Claire. Having overcome the grief of her loss, she now spends her days caring for refugees at an Abbey and Heim. Her bright outlook and words of encouragement bring hope to those. Yep, Lancelot intervened in her escape. All right. All right, uh, I went ahead and leveled Denim up in Blowguns a little bit, so he could at least have access to one finishing move. I forgot the water attack, Flood Lash, that's, that's whips, that's not Blowguns. You get access to ice stuff with Blowguns. But, uh, all right, I just basically just wanted you to have at least, uh, one attack there. Um, I also need to make sure I put all of Kashua and Canopus' stuff back on. And then I guess we can go see what this crazy battle is all about. Uh, let's see here. What did I... What else did I have on you? Oh yeah, Heavenly Judge. Heavenly Judge was the other thing. Um, Heavenly Judge, Heavenly Judge. There you are. Okay. Uh, and then Canopus, I need to put your two swords back on. Uh, there you go. And there you go. And then Vice, you need your long gun back. Yeah, I had to take these off when I was doing the stuff with Regina, so... Alright, let's go see... Uh, what this is all about. People have been telling me this is very, very hard. Hopefully I can do it without grinding anymore? People seem very adamant about how hard it is, but we will see. Um, if I have to do, like, one last giant mega stream where I just do a bunch of grinding, I can, I guess. Find anything, sister? Not a thing. Someone came while we were gone. The house is as empty as a drum. These things happen in times of war. I know that, Vice. We did our share of taking when we had nothing. So wait, is this back to... Are we back These in time? Because they're... They're in their old outfits. I guess not. You're saying those were hard times. I'm guessing you all just got back in your old outfits with your old portraits for... For fun? Old time's sake? I remember once, during the rains, there was nothing to eat. You brought back a hare for us, Vice. Oh my god, the hare! Oh, the hare is coming up. The hare that land to Vice's incel downfall. But it was going foul. I told you it wasn't fit for pigs to eat. Let alone humans. I still feel bad about that. But when you go out, you don't want to come home empty-handed. And the barkroom was still in Goliath. The only food to be had were their table scraps. You shouldn't apologize, Vice. Here you were, risking your hand or worse to get food, and all I could do was complain. If I'd have known you were a princess, I'd have charged you triple for that fetid rabbit. <laughs> if I'd have known you were a princess... Okay, okay, so wait, this is current time, even though they have their old... portraits and stuff, and... You know, clothes. Okay, okay, so this is present time, because you know that Casual is a princess. Okay, okay, so this is still- this is still code of time. We're not back in time... ...at the moment. I imagine what's going to be going on here is we're going to be going back and, you know, changing what happened in Goliath. <laughs> That's a sweet cutscene. I wonder sometimes... What would have happened if the Dark Knights hadn't attacked Goliath that day? There it is. Okay. Yeah. What would have become of us? Okay, and here and here we go back. Okay, okay. Episode 4, The Magnificent Twelve. Oh, and it's Oh, I was going I was under the impression it was just going to be like one battle. Okay, I guess not. So, I imagine we're going to be fighting like super hard versions of the Dark Knights. That is my guess. So let's go ahead and put Kashua in Canopus. 
Um, Vice. I'm trying to remember all the characters that were mentioned probably had something. Probably all of you. And yeah, you have Uhuk on. Congratulations, Gildas. Yeah, I completely forgot about re-unlocking all the finishing moves for Denim. That's gonna suck. Denim's only gonna have access to that. That's gonna be unfortunate for Denim. Don't know how effective that's gonna be, but... I mean, I guess I, I guess what I could do on Denim is just put the dagger on... ...so you have access to things. Right? Like, put, um... Put the, the dagger thing on... ...and put at least a dagger on you... ...so you still have access to your dagger finishing moves. Cause yeah, I care about those more than I care about the other one, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do that, I guess. There you go. Now you still have access to your finishing moves, and you you have your your Derwin. Yeah. All right. So there's that. Um, everybody else has access to everything. So good, good, good. Uh, who else would say something? Uh, I believe it was mentioned Hobram might have something to say. So Hobram's going in. Um. RSL, your charm might be useful. And last but not least, Denalto, probably. Okay, and let's just make sure one more time that I did actually put everything back on everybody. Yeah, okay. I think this is the squad I want to go with. Let's scout this battle. Oh god, please don't tell me I have to protect the villager. Level 69?! Oh god, that's really high level. Ooh, is this what people meant? Ooh, this might be what people meant. Okay, so it's Andorus and that's Volak. Level 70. Level 70. Oh my god. Yeah, and they even have like special weapons. Hmm. Actually, was this the, were these the weapons you had before? I want to say you had Balmung. Yeah, maybe these are just the weapons you had before. I thought they looked slightly different, at least on Doris's. Okay, they are 19 levels higher than me. Um, we'll see how this goes, but I don't have high hopes. That final Tactics Ogre stream, where I just do a bunch of stuff. Probably go into the Palace of the Dead again, defeat more of the Heavenly... Generals, maybe stuff like that. Wait, that may have to happen. Child. It may have to happen. Damn, this game doesn't know when to quit, does it? Oh my god. It requires so much grinding and everything, but I've come so far at this point that I am kind of like, no, I'm gonna finish you just as a fuck you. But if I would have known it was going to take this much work, I would have stopped it like Coda 2, probably. Because, my god. Even Coda 2 was a lot of work. It's so much. Our orders are to show no mercy. But he knows nothing. If he's a partisan, it should be enough to take him captive. And Doris continuing to be the only Dark Knight that's not a giant asshole. Please, help. I, I did it. nothing wrong. Lord Winsorf, your orders. The High Champion wants no witnesses. Bluff. Sir. Damn, you people are assholes. That was a kid. I mean, you're already killing innocents, but Jesus, it was a kid. The High Champion wants no witnesses. Lancelot, you piece of shit. Some villagers still remain. Who are they? Looks like we finally flushed them out of hiding. Hark to me. These are the partisans who did the killing in Hein. Almorican remnants? No, that's not possible. I'm telling you, they're our enemy. Draw your sword, Volak. Okay, Andorus and Volak want to do battle. 
I can't help but notice how many how many levels above me these characters are. Excuse me, does that does that villager have ramparts? What was that? Oh wait, no, they were just getting in the zone of that. Okay. Um, well, Denim, I I guess let's go, friend. You have Derwin. 318 damage. I mean, that's that's some damage. Okay, yeah, Denim can actually hit pretty damn hard with this thing. Um, the question is, do we have enough damage to defeat Volak and, uh... Ondoris? That is the question. So, is this gonna be, like... A bunch of fights with every single one of them? Then there's gonna be, like, two at once? I was... The way I was thinking, it was gonna be, like, all of them at once, which was terrifying. There's Uhu dropping 314 damage, that's pretty good. Yeah, this might be a situation where I'm gonna have to do a- do a super mega stream. Even if I do manage to beat this here, there's no guarantee I'll be able to do the next battle, and... I was wondering if I was gonna be able to finish things off today, but... I don't think I'm gonna be able to. So, I might as well just have the... the final big stream to see Tactics Ogre off and get absurdly powerful. Um, I could get more Ogre Blades... and stuff. Ooh, that's an idea too! Um... The Jigla set. If I got that for Denim, I think all I'm missing is the Bracers. If I got that set for Denim, it would increase his range power exponentially, so he would be quite powerful with that blowgun. That's something to think about, too. Yeah, yeah, we might need- we might need to do that. We might need to do that. This game has taken so much of my life, but a little bit more isn't that bad, I suppose. But this is the last time, damn it, for real. Sister, what's wrong? You're trembling. Uh, are you ill? We should leave. No, I, I suffer no affliction. Yeah, Denim, we just saw a kid get stabbed to death. Kasha was obviously distressed. Only when I think back on what happened this day, even though I know we're not as we were then, it frightens me. Yeah, that bit too. We're also basically re-experiencing trauma. Courage, sister. We will not lose this fight. Think on why we are here. You're right. We're not here to witness a tragedy. Thank you, Denim. A word from you was all I needed. Woof. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing real damage to the enemies. Um... I can't actually hurt them. Despite them being nearly 20 levels higher than me. I did have some charms I could have used to. But... God, the game just doesn't know when to end. It is a game that's had multiple versions over many, many years at this point, so... You know, it's gonna have a... It's gonna be chock full of content, it is. Mm. You know, doing this battle... Um, doing this battle, even if I do manage to pull it off, I'm gonna have to redo it anyway if I'm intending to have one final stream where maybe I get all of the Heavenly Generals and all of that jazz. I wanted to- the reason I wanted to be able to finish it today was so I could get videos up, but if I put Tactics Ogre on a break and then I can stream Sunday, um, and then have like a bunch of grinding, and maybe we can get to the point where I feel like I can adequately take this on, but... At the moment, I'm not entirely sure that I can. This is just the first battle, and... I don't know. I think the safer bet would be to just... Even though I re really, really don't want to. Um... I mean, this the stream isn't so bad, but I expected this to be over by now, basically. Uh, the streaming I'm fine with. Streaming's fun. Uh, yeah, I think we need to- I think we need to have one more power grind sesh for Tactics Ogre. Is it going to be worth it? Probably not, but... You know... I feel the need to do it. So... This video is probably gonna go up on... Or this video is going to go up on... The 4th. Um, I will probably stream the 5th or 6th, and then maybe Tactics Ogre will return on the 6th or 7th for the finale. 
but uh, it's probably going to have to take a few days hiatus while I kind of get everything together, um, because this is going to take some time. Those enemies are level 70. I don't even want to know how much damage Andorus and Volak would even do to me. They're incredibly intimidating. Um, and I thought my cursed weapons would do a little bit more for me. Denim is definitely strong with this stupid thing, but he could be stronger. I could also max out his blowgun skill so it's even better. And like I said, I could get him the Jigla set, so be even more effective there. I need to see what actually drops... Um, what actually drops those. Uh, actually, I don't even know if I could wear it. Can I even... I can't. As a, oh wait, no, I can wear I can wear the dark coat. Okay, so yeah, I have the dark coat, and um, if I got the bracers, and I think it's like the leggings or something like that. If I get the full set, oh wait, no, it has to be the bow. That's right. Yeah, because you have to use the bow. Well, maybe I can get a cursed bow or something, or or the full ogre set. Um, okay, okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, this is uh. We're gonna have to have one more power train, uh, power grinding training session. <sighs> Tactics Ogre, can't you just, can't you just let me die? Can't you just let me die, Tactics Ogre? Six day, almost seven days of my life spent playing this game. Huh. All right, well, like I said, there's gonna be a hiatus for this for a few days while I get everything together, but then once we get everything together, I will absolutely have all of the finale all of Coda 4 in one episode, and we can just power through the rest of the game. So, apologies for this episode being short and weird, but I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into. I just know people said it was hard. Um, but it's always hard to tell, you know, like... You, you always have to kind of figure it out for yourself, because sometimes comments are... can be over-exaggerating, sometimes comments can be wrong, sometimes... You know, things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it is always usually best to see for yourself and experience things. And now that I've experienced it, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is really, this is going to be really hard. So I probably need to do some more things. And we can at least see all the Heavenly Generals, I guess. I can stream, I can get more, more forks by going into San Bronza. Then we can go back in here to the Palace of the Dead. We can... Fight Blackmore again, hopefully get more Ogre Armor parts, get more Ogre Blades. You can also apparently get an Ogre Blade as a drop from, um, Roderick. I'm not sure if you can have two of them at the same time. But... Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can take out the final Heavenly Generals, all that jazz. We'll, we'll see. We'll see! Alright, well, hope you've enjoyed this very weird episode of Tactics Ogre, and I'll see you in a few days for some more, or see you in like a day or two on the stream if people come out for that, so, bye bye <laughs>